Right, so we are warmed up, we are ready to dive deep into the first group. Uh, so just for the record, I have grouped uh, the questions into three groups. Uh, and these groups are uh, the new architecture of React Native, multiple platforms and general development. So just general questions uh, that people were interested to have answers for. Uh, so let's move on to the new architecture of React Native. Uh, so just to quickly recap, uh, last year React Native team announced a lot of changes uh, to the core of React Native that you know, addresses a lot of challenges that we are facing when it comes down to building applications. And that, that includes Turbo Modules, which is a new implementation of native modules for better performance and synchronous access. Uh, CodeGen to ease creation of native modules by synchronizing the type definitions and method declarations between native and JavaScript. GSI, which is JavaScript interface, and it is a unified lightweight sort of general purpose API for any JavaScript virtual machine. And it enables every uh, other piece of the re-architecture and is what, for example, makes Hermes integration very easy. Uh, and, 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 you know, easy is obviously relate, relative here. Um, and, and Fabric, which is just the UI re-architecture to take full advantage of, you know, these features and concurrent React architecture. So while this work is still in progress, we can see a lot of these already in the open source. And I think it would be great uh, to, to, to sort of go over the latest updates than the RIA. And I think that questions uh, from our audience might be a great starting point uh, to our discussion. So, uh, so the first question that I have here is, you know, what is the status of the re-architecture and what are the changes uh, that are already shipped? And when do we expect to have an update on the rest of them? And I think the best person here would be Ram, uh, that is, you know, even wearing Facebook t-shirts. So uh, that tells, uh, tells it all. Sure. So I think uh, this has been a question that people have been asking, and uh, I can clearly see how people can't wait to get their hands on uh, uh, like the new architecture. But I want to be like amply careful here about talking about like there is no release for a new architecture in the sense that there'll not be one single date where where it's like things stop and like suddenly React Native switch switches over to the new architecture. Uh, our initial plan was definitely trying to get it out in uh, 2020, but unfortunately COVID hit. A lot of people their productivity kind of went down. And as a result, we, we may not be able to hit 2020. Uh, we are looking at 2021 as something that uh, uh, where this can get out. But I mean, I don't have a specific date in mind, but let me also lay down what, what does releasing it really mean? So uh, let me talk about a little bit on what, what's happening in terms of it, uh, how, how fast you're going it internally, and then talk about what's available externally. So internally, I think on the main Facebook app, we are actually testing Fabric, we are testing uh, Turbo Modules, and honestly, JSI is pretty much the way to go for both Fabric and Turbo Module. All of our native modules are code gen. In fact, we also retro code gen the existing modules. Uh, there's like Turbo Module spec and stuff for existing modules also. So the testing is heavily underway. We are seeing some really exciting results, both in terms of performance and in terms of stability. And I think one of our biggest uh, 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 motivations here is to ensure that the transi transition is smooth and stable, more importantly. Like pe people's apps don't start crashing. And that's why we are being like, exceedingly careful. Uh, we have also started to roll out uh, Fabric and Turbo Modules to internal apps. For example, the Oculus companion app that I work on, uh, we are starting to roll out Turbo Modules in it. Fab Fabric is a little bit harder because we wanted to do it screen by screen. And for that, you need native navigation, which we are trying to move to. Uh, and this is a similar story with all standalone applications. So I think the best way to think about it is internally in Facebook apps, we are slowly starting to roll out Fabric and Turbo modules, uh, like ironing out the issues and any uh, edge cases that we encounter. As far as open source is concerned, uh, you'd actually be surprised, but both Fabric and Turbo modules are out there. I think the biggest challenge is it's not buildable, and that's only because Facebook internally uses Buck. So all of our uh, build scripts are reliant on Buck. Now, this is where I think I, uh, we can use some help from the community. And I think uh, someone did this for iOS, where they picked up the iOS Turbo modules in Fabric Systems, wired it up into the Xcode build, and they were able to build it. We haven't done that on Gradle yet. So if someone is brave enough for, and wants to try this out, I would like recommend this as a really good project where you play around with Gradle and enable like uh, uh, Turbo modules and Fabric on uh, RN Tester, for example. Uh, it's not as hard as it looks. It's basically a bunch of magic around graded scripts and Android.mk, the C++ uh, wrapper. So that's the current state of the world. A lot of code is out there. I think Eli also spoke about like code generation. And uh, I think it is in a state where you can try it out, test it out, but I'm not sure if uh, I would recommend it for production yet, mostly because it's not officially supported. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
Uh, thanks for answering that. And actually, you would be surprised. That, I mean, I'm not. I'm not surprised because I've been there already. How 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 quickly sometimes it might be. How how easy it sometimes might be to to, to kind of release some of these internal pieces into into React Native for for iOS. For example, on, on the on the Hermes site, uh, compiling it for iOS is theoretically just you know uh, doing some changes to the CMake, which on its own is very hard. But I was kind of surprised that you know uh, essentially the code is just C plus plus. So as long as you compile it, it theoretically can run. So no, not a lot of magic there inside, uh, as, as someone would think. Um, awesome. So um, so that brings me to the next question: where where I could track the progress of that uh, in the future, for example? Uh, so uh, I think Monica also wanted to answer this, but let me quickly give a spiel of like the discussions repository and the history, which I probably haven't spoken about. So I think almost one year ago, when I was in the React Native team, I realized that. There was a lot of discussions that are happening one-off, and uh, one of our our goals in the React Native team was to be inclusive and ensure that every discussion is transparent and people understand the rationale behind what's happening. Uh, that's the reason why we created this repository called uh, Discussions and Proposals, where people like anyone in the world can submit a proposal. People can critique it, look at uh, look at what can be implemented, and then go ahead and implement it. So we have this proposal called Discussions and Proposals, and uh, there's a, there are issues related specifically to Turbo modules and to uh, Fabric. Uh, that's where most of our updates are happening. Unfortunately, those issues could also be noisy because uh, usually for every single update, there's like 10 comments asking, hey, when is it ready? Uh, so you might, want to, uh, you, want to, you might want to add on your noise filtering in there, but I think those are probably the best places that you can look at. It's also uh, a place where I'd recommend if you're experimenting with Turbo modules, for example, just go add your status there and tell people, hey, here's what I've tried out, and people might come asking you. I think also that um, if you allow me to jump in, in addition to what Ram just said, um, the, intuitively the first place that I a particular go and I will recommend people who just getting into is, um, of course, the React Native repo, where we also have like a bunch of like issues being discussed and the React Native community repos. In particular with the React Native community repo, uh, I found them very useful, especially their releases uh, section. Um, I believe, and, and correct me, Ram, if I'm wrong, is like one of the most reliable places to go, um, you know, in regards of staying up to date with uh, status reports and, and you know, uh, all what's going on uh, with React Native overall. Um, and then just the, the usual, just chain logs and then release notes from uh, from your team at Facebook. I think it's also, um, yeah, just like tracking all those will be pretty effective in just keeping, um, you know, any developer up to date. Cool. Uh, so, so what is the feature you're most excited about? Um, I'm sorry, you're asking me. Okay, so these, well, we've been talking about how big this new re-architecture uh, of React Native will be or is like kind of the process of being. Uh, and of course, there are, there are uh, a lot of things that will be definitely um, game changers um, in the way we develop apps. But if I have to pick one, I'm definitely going to go with Turbo Modules. Um, you know, this new feature that pretty much tackles, um, uh, you know, the most in terms of performance and safety. And um, I really like the idea of having tape safety between native uh, code and JavaScript. And uh, particular for, uh, particularly for us at MLS, um, this is really important because we, we do have a fair amount of native modules and integrations um, with uh, third-party providers. So, um, you know, the overhead reduction that Turbo Modules introduces uh, when calling methods from the JavaScript side is something that is really, really going to help us with performance, um, you know, among with the faster startup when initializing our application. So definitely Turbo Modules for me. Nice. I like that. I like that as well. Anybody else want to chime in here? Uh, for me, it's probably going to be JSI uh, because JSI is like the fundamental layer that's the, uh, on which all of these things are built. And uh, you'd actually be surprised, but all the other hybrid uh, uh, mobile app development platforms have a story similar to uh, uh, JSI. For example, if you look at native script, uh, native script actually has a way to generate all of these JavaScript files based on templates. Like you take a Java class, it automatically generates all the methods and exposes them to uh, JavaScript. And uh, the mechanism they use is something very, very similar to, similar to JSI. In fact, JSI is also fundamentally the way a browser exposes its native APIs to your JavaScript layer. So looking at it in retrospect, 
maybe we didn't really need a bridge back then and we could have just used jsi but uh, i i would like vote for jsi mostly because it's like the founding block of uh, the foundation of the entire uh, system and jsi is also already ready so you can technically start using jsi right away not just for fabric or turbo modules but even let's say you're building your own uh, uh, javascript layer on top of uh, a javascript engine jsi would come in very handy yeah i i'm uh, probably most excited about um uh, fabric um ever since initially when we explored uh react native at rc i think i spent a month trying to just get react native to work with ui kit as i was used to it um and things like uh i don't know a ui collection view or all those sorts which with with the rc app you know there's so many images shown and you want to have fast scrolling and fast interactions that that was kind of just uh, it felt like a necessity in the end i think the app works uh, works really well with react native as it is but you know conceptually i think having the ability to do such uh, synchronous uh, ui work will probably pay off in uh, in in areas where it is noticeable that react native is somewhat lacking Uh, for me, I also like Fabric. Feel more more excited about Fabric as well. From my talk, I said that uh, for third party developer developer to have an out of tree platform is really really a disaster because the upstream change is really uh, change every day, and so for especially for the individuals, it's really hard to have an out of tree platform. And now with the Fabric, uh, most of core is also cross platform so i think it will benefit for the new platform and make it is possible yeah i i totally agree with that